Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Dave. This is Wild Reads and this is part two of my August book haul. Roll the titles. Hi everyone, welcome back. It is a Monday. It's not only just any old Monday, it's Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK and the sun's out. It's a warm, no, it's a hot bank holiday here in the UK. It's it's a bit sticky. Um, so I've come upstairs to the shade. I was gonna do this in the garden, but it's it's too hot. It's just too hot. Um, well, I've been, we've had a mad weekend. I've been to Yorkshire and back, um, which is quite a long way from London for those that don't know where Yorkshire is. But I've been up there and I've hauled loads and loads of books, so I've got lots of books to tell you about. Um, so we're going to start with new books, um, and we're going to crack on straight away, straight in with it. The first one is Sarah Winman, A Year of Marvellous Ways. I haven't read this before, obviously, that's why I've bought it. Um, I've just read Tin Man, uh, which will be appearing in my August wrap-up, uh, which will be later, later this week very early September I'll do the August wrap up and I read Tin Man um, never read Sarah Women before I know this is a very popular book on on um, booktube so I've just read you the blurb this is a story about Marvellous Ways an 89 year old woman who sits by a creek in Cornwall waiting for a last adventure and it's about Francis Drake a young soldier who washes up there reeling from war and broken hearted it's about the magic in everyday life and the law of the sea, the healing powers of storytelling and slow gin, and how we carry on when grief comes snapping at our heels. Um, that sounds a great book, and I've heard lots of good things about it, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. Um, and I plan to also buy When God Was a Rabbit as well, because um, she's got three books out. The next one is, and also a follow-on, uh, which you'll we'll see in my wrap-up, um, is Daphne du Maurier. Jamaica in this is a new book now I read this years and years ago uh, many many years ago actually early 90s very early 90s when I stayed at the Jamaica Inn for three nights um, and they had these for sale and so I bought one and read it because what better place to read Jamaica Inn than stay at the Jamaica Inn and read it right so um, I bought this again because I want to I want to reread it um, because it was such a good book before and I've recently read Rebecca which will also appear in my wrap up for August um, so definitely De Maurier, Jamaica Inn very much looking forward to reading that um, now I visited when I was up in Yorkshire we stayed at a, it's a city it's a very large town stroke city it's got a cathedral so it's classed as a city a place called Ripon and in Ripon there is a tiny little bookstore and it's called the Little Ripon Bookshop and it's a gorgeous place. Um, I might put a put a, a picture of it up here. Um, but it is it's a lovely bookshop run by wonderful people. Um, so while I was in there, I picked up uh, this, which is this is the the upstairs room by Kate Murray Brown, published by Picador. It's not been out long, um, and I shall. Oh, no, there's a little rip and bookstore bookmark. I love it when little bookshops do that. It, it's good. It's good touch. Um, so it was there from the beginning, the day they first saw the house. Eleanor and Richard have stretched themselves to the limit to buy the perfect home, a tall Victorian townhouse with enough room for their growing family. But the cracks are already starting to show. Eleanor is unnerved by the eerie atmosphere in the house and is convinced it is making her ill. Then two young daughters are restless and unsettled. Three-year-old Rosie misbehaves and points to an imaginary girl. Richard, still positive they found the house of their dreams, is more preoccupied with Zoe, their alluring mercurial 27-year-old lodger. As Eleanor's symptoms intensify, she becomes determined to unravel the mystery of the family who, lived, who last lived in the house. Who were the Athroths? What, Ashworths, why did they leave in such a hurry? And why is the name Emily written hundreds of times on the walls of the upstairs rooms? Now that, that sounds a cracker. I can't, I, I'm gonna be reading that very soon. That is, that is definitely on my September TBR. 
So that's The Upstairs Ruin by Kate Murray Brown, published by Picador. The next new book, sorry, I'm having to lean down here. I should have put them on the table up here, shouldn't I? Um, the next new book is uh, another, a booktuber that I watch, Steve Partridge. I'll link his channel down below. Um, he's uh, an Iris Murdoch fan, and he's shortly going to be doing a series of videos on Iris Murdoch. So I saw this in the bookstore. Um, now, I've, I've never read Iris Murdoch before, but this one sounds really good. This is Under the Net. It's a vintage classic. This was her debut novel. Um, and just to give you a little bit of blurb, uh, Jake, clever and lazy, makes a living out of writing translations and sponging off his friends. When he is kicked out of his latest lodgings, he embarks on a series of fantastic and hilarious adventures around London involving movie stars, majestic philosophers, bookies, singers, and a celebrity hound called The Marvelous Mr. Mars. That, that sounds my kind of book, so I'm very much looking forward to reading that, um, and I'm very much looking forward to Steve's uh, series on Iris Murdoch, so look out for that. I'll link the channel down below. Um, the next new book is, oh, I've still got the price, a little bargain, one ninety nine. dollars The next new book is The Centre of Winter, uh, published by Fourth Estate. This is by um, Maya Hornbacker, um, author of the best-selling memoir, Wasted. Uh, and this is set in Minnesota. Um, it's about uh, Claire Schiller, wife and mother, takes shelter from the emotional storm with her husband's parents, but must ultimately emerge from her grief to help her two young children to recover. The centre of winter finds humour in unlikely places and evokes the north, its people and its landscape with warmth sensitivity and insight that seems that seems really good so that's the center of winter by maya hornbacker very much looking forward to reading that the next one i'm really really excited about this is from excuse me as i sink as i sink down there um, this is from tinder press this is brand new out hot off the press um, this is i am i am i am which is a gorgeous cover there so i'm just trying to avoid the light in that uh, this is the memoir from Maggie O'Farrell. Now, being a big Maggie O'Farrell fan, I would I would buy anything with uh, with with Maggie O'Farrell in. Uh, and this is her memoir, Seventeen Brushes with Death. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, most of you will be familiar with with um, Maggie O'Farrell's fiction. But I've been a fan for many years now. Um, so this I also bought from the Ripon Bookshop. Um, I Am, I Am, I Am is Maggie O'Farrell's electric and shocking memoir of the near-death experiences that have punctuated her life. The childhood illness she was not expected to survive, a teenage yearning to escape that nearly ended in disaster, a terrifying encounter on a remote path, a mismanaged labour in an understaffed hospital. This is a memoir with a difference. 17 encounters with Maggie at different ages in different locations revealed to us a whole life in a series of tense, visceral snapshots. Now that, I'm very much looking forward to reading that. I'll be reading that very soon. So don't be surprised if you see that in a in a September wrap up. Um, so very much looking forward to reading that. I am, I am, I am, by Tinder Press, Maggie O'Farrell. Now, we are zipping through these books, I know, but we have got quite a lot to get through. So also in Ripon, there is um, a load of charity shops. There's about half a dozen really good charity shops in Ripon um, and I must congratulate the people of Yorkshire on their reading taste because there are some there are some real corkers to be found if you're a, a literary fiction fan there are lots and lots of great books to be had in their charity shops so and I've bought quite a few so we'll, we'll start with this one this is Jeremy Harding Mother Country this is published by Faber um, th th this is not a really old book this is it's just a cover design. It's 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 an aged design, um, and this is a work of non-fiction. Um, when Jeremy Harding was a child, his mother Maureen told him he was adopted. She described his natural parents as a Scandinavian sailor and a little Irish girl who worked at Woolworths. It was only later, as Harding set out to look for traces of his birth mother, that he began to understand who his adopted mother really was, and the benign make-believe world she built for herself and her little boy so very much I, I do like to read I do like a memoir um, um, and this this one looks really good so very much looking forward to reading that Mother Country 
by Jeremy Harding, and I will I'll leave a link to these books um, in the down to their section as usual. The next one we came across uh, this was shortlisted. Uh, this is C by Tom McCarthy, and this was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2010. Um, and this this is great artwork on these. Some of it. I am drawn to a, a nice bit of artwork. Um, so C follows the short, intense life of Serge Carefax, a man who, as his name suggests, surges into the electric modernity of the early 20th century, transfixed by the technologies that will obliterate him. That, this sounds a really good book. If you've read any of these books, by the way, um, just let me know in the comments below what you thought of them. Because, um, yeah, it, it's nice to read some of these backlists sometimes. Uh, and I know some of these books would have been very popular. Um, the next one, very excited about this one. This is, uh, again, a non-fiction book uh, and an author that I've reread recently that will also appear in a wrap-up. This is Towards the End of the Morning by Michael Fran. And this is, um, this is one of the best. I read this years and years and years ago. Uh, this was... This is one of the best books on the culture of Fleet Street reporting um, that, that has ever been written. Um, Kingsley Amis wrote uh, a book years ago about the, the culture of Fleet Street and newspaper reporting, um, but this is this is this tops that in my opinion. Um, and this has got a new introduction by the author. It's a new print of it, published by Faber. Michael Fran's classic is set in the crossword and nature notes department of an. Ex obscure national newspaper during the declining years of Fleet Street where John Dyson dreams wistfully of fame and gentlemanly life until one day his great chance of glory at last arrives. So although it's a novel it does contain flashes and it does highlight the culture of Fleet Street reporters um, in, in Fleet, when Fleet Street was in its heyday. So very much looking forward to reading that. Towards the End of the Morning by Michael Fran. The next book is an author that I have struggled with in the past, and that's Zadie Smith. This is The Autograph Man. Um, I'm not sure if this was a, I don't think this was a debut, was it? When, what year did this come out? Bear with me. So 2002. Um, I have struggled a little bit with Zadie Smith in the past, but um, I saw this, and um, I know she's got, she's got Swing Time, which is just behind me, I think. Yeah, Swing Time, which is, um, included in this year's Booker long list, which I haven't read yet. I will get round to it, hopefully before it makes the short list or not. It may not make the short list. Um, but yeah, so The Autograph Man by Zadie Smith. Yeah, so if you've read that as well, let me know. The next one yeah, I have for you is, um, th this is another author that I've struggled with in the past, and this is Martin Amis, Yellow Dog. Now, I'm a big Kingsley Amis fan, um, who is obviously Martin Amis's father. Um, very much enjoyed the writing of Kingsley Amis. I've got a short story collection, and I've read The Old Devils, which won the Booker Prize in 1986, um, as well as various other bits and pieces over the years. Um, Martin Amis, I don't find as accessible as his father's writing was, um, but but still very good. I've read a couple of good ones of Martin Amis, and I've read a couple that I didn't enjoy as much. Um, so this is Yellow Dog. I'm not sure when it, when it was published. Let's have a quick look. So this came out in 2003. Um, so yeah, if, if you've read this one, let me know. Again, let me know in the comments below. The next book is uh, a non-fiction book. This is written by Richard Morris, and this is called Times Anvil, England, Archaeology and the Imagination. Uh, it just seemed a really interesting book. An impassioned history and, and defence of archaeology, a history of humanity in England, and a heartfelt meditation on transience and mortality. History thrives on stories. Times Anvil explores archaeology's influence on what such stories say, how they are told, who tells them, and how we listen. Um, that seems a really unique and interesting book, so um, I'm looking forward to reading that. I'm, I'm going to try and read a little bit more non-fiction, um, if not this year, then certainly next year as well, because it's nice to... Um, 
after reading a lot of fiction in a row it's nice to sometimes I think spread a bit of non-fiction and fiction together and, and me memoir of course and the next one is we've got the win this was this won the Man Booker Prize in 2007 it's Anne M. Wright The Gathering um, I've read and M right this year. I've read The Green Road, which I very much enjoyed. Um, and this is I used to have this in I used to have this in paperback and I think I started it but I didn't finish it. But I can't remember why. It was a long time ago. Um, must have been when it first came out in paperback and I can't find the paperback anymore. So um, I saw this and I scooped it up um, and this is um, the nine surviving children of the Hegarty clan gather in Dublin for the wake of their wayward brother, Liam. It wasn't the drink that killed him, although that certainly helped. It was what happened to him as a boy in his grandfather's house in the winter of 1968. His sister, Veronica, was there then, as she is now, keeping the dead man company just for another little while. So, and it says, it goes on to say, the gathering is a family epic, condensed and clarified through the remarkable lens of Anne M. White's unblinking eye. Very much looking forward to reading that. I've been reading a lot of Irish authors this year um, and Anne M. White, The Gathering. Very much looking forward to that. Um, as I am all of them, we've got a lot of books here. But we are we are getting to the end. Um, the next one is Madeleine St. John. This was shortlisted for the booker. Can you see a theme here? I seem to have a lot of books that have either won the booker or have been shortlisted for the booker. Um, this is Madeline St. John, The Essence of the Thing. And it's it, it's one of these it's one of these paperbacks that has got the little flappy thing. I like it when they do that. Um, and this says there is no nice way to say this. I've decided that is to say I've come to the conclusion that we should part. And with that conclusion, Nicholas Troubles begin. Intrigued? I was intrigued when I read that bit, so that looks really good. That's been out a few years, published by Fourth Estate, so very much looking forward to reading that one as well. The next one we've got is uh, The Lighted Rooms. This is by Richard Mason. Uh, this has been out a few years as well. Um, and this is at 48, Eloise McAllister loves living alone, successful, assertive and resolutely private. Her days pass in a blur of adrenaline, especially when she gambles the company fortunes on a tip from an old lover. Her mother Joan is 80, a gifted pianist, denied the delights of performance by old age and arthritic joints. That seems really good. You know what I'm going to say next? Very much looking forward to reading that one. Um, the next one is a thriller as well, and this is uh, What She Left by T.R. Richmond. This was published by Penguin Michael Joseph. Um, when Alex Salmon dies, the ripples from her tragic drowning can be felt in the news, on the internet and in the hearts of those closest to her. However, the man who, who knows her best isn't family or a friend. His name is Professor Jeremy Cook, an academic fixed on piercing together Alex's existence. Cook knows that faithfully recreating Alice through her diaries, text messages and online presence has become all-consuming. But he does not know how deep his search will take him into this story of love, loss and obsession, where everyone, including himself, has something to hide. This this seems a really intriguing book. Um, only come out a couple of years ago, uh, and that's What She Left by T.R. Richmond. The next book is, uh, and the last book, I think this is the last book, yes, it is. Um, I saw on... I saw, who did I see talking about this? I saw Charles Heathcote talking about this, and I'll link his channel down below. Um, he's a really good booktuber, and I love the way he does his reviews. He's really passionate, and he's really, um, Charles is, or Charlie, as he calls himself, um, he's, he's very articulate in his reviews, um, and he, he, he really does take take care to get the review the way, the way he wants it. And I saw him talking about this book, which he's, again, read recently. And that's The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. Um, this was shortlisted for the Man Book of Book Book Prize in 2013. And again, I never got round to reading it. Um, it. It is a bit. It is a bit of a hefty one. It's a bit of a brick. Um, it is 1866, and Walter Moody has come to make his fortune upon the New Zealand goldfields. 
On the night of his arrival, he stumbles across a tense gathering of 12 local men who have met in secret to discuss a series of unsolved crimes. A wealthy man has vanished, a whore has tried to end her life, and an enormous sum of money has been discovered in the home of a luckless drunk. Moody is soon drawn into the mystery, a network of fates and fortunes that is as complex and exquisitely patterned as the night sky. That I don't know why I didn't read this the first time um, the first time it came out, because it seems like my sort of book. Um, so I'm fascinated to, to read that one. I'm very much looking forward to reading it, as I am all the others. Now, I do realise there was a lot of books there, and I don't think I'll be hauling this much, because um, the last book haul that I did, I think that was about 19 books. Excuse me. And I think this one's been about 19 books as well, or 20, I haven't counted them, but I will. It seems like a lot of books that I've hauled in August. Um, so not every month's gonna be like this. It's just that we've been to quite a few places this month that have had lots of lovely bookshops and lots of lovely charity shops. Um, so, so yeah, so we've been to Seven Oaks on, on a book hunt. That was the, the day of cozy reading night. We went to Rochester where I hold a great number of books. Um, as I say, we've just come back from Yorkshire. Um, so yeah, that that was that was the books. That was the book haul, August part two. Um, I hope you enjoy those. I'm gonna be back. I, I don't usually upload on Monday. This is like a bank holiday Monday special. Um, so I'll be back on Wednesday with another video for you. Um, I'm trying to keep the videos fairly consistent so i'll upload on a wednesday and i'll upload on a sunday as well so you get two a week from me so i hope you enjoyed that little book haul do let me know in the comments below if you've read any of the books i've mentioned today i'd love to know your opinion on them i'd love to know if you've read them i'd love to know if you're gonna read them if you've got them on a tbr if you've just got them on a shelf gathering dust um yeah so i'd love to know your comments about them I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.